Hallelujah. It's good news, isn't it? We're um, going to turn to 2 Timothy, the book of 2 Timothy. It's one of Paul's letters. You just stay there, bro. If you want to turn to that in your Bible, it's towards the end of your scriptures. It's one of Paul's last letters uh, in the scriptures. It's not one of the last ones he wrote. It's just one of the last ones that we put it in order of. Um, and, uh, and I'm going to be talking today about the power of God. Are we up for that? Yeah. Yeah? I'll tell you what, Harry, do you want to start playing that video? There's a little bit of tunage in the back of it. And when I'm ready, I'll tell you when to turn it down. Is that all right? It's a silly song. Here we go, look. You like that? Weird little dog, look, carrying that long horse along. See that? By the way, I'm still turning to my scriptures whilst you guys are looking at this silly bit. Uh, just so uh, you know what's happening online, if you watch it online, right now we're watching a video of all these silly little dogs that are like nothing, dragging along ginormous horses that are so powerful and mighty. And, uh, and, and can you believe it? I'm going to preach on YouTube, hallelujah. Although I've got a scripture to go with it, so uh, don't burn me yet. Um, so you can turn the music off now, keep the video going though. Come on, you like that? Yeah. It's cute, isn't it? It's cute, isn't it? You know, you know, sometimes we're like that as Christians, you know. We're like the big old horse just there. And, uh, and Satan and all his friends are like that little dog, just laughing at us, like taking the mickey out of us, like, what are they doing? Um, there you go, there's a bit of conviction, first thing. Um, so I'm reading from 2 Timothy chapter 1. I'm going to keep on speaking about this video, just leave it on, it's fine. Um, and you can keep, you know, if you want to keep on watching that, feel free. If you're just like, like amazed by this, by this idea that something so powerful to be dragged along by something that's not got any power in it at all, um, then, uh, then, you know, if that's what's in your heart right now, then let it be so. Um, I'm reading from 2 Timothy 1, chapter, seven, uh, chapter 1, verse 7. It says, For God did not give us the spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. And now you suddenly realise what I'm talking about. Well, I've got a video of massive, John, almost powerful horses uh, being dragged around by little stupid dogs. Um, and the worst thing is, look, that dog's like, I want to have a go. I want to have a go at dragging that big, scary thing along. Uh, who would do that? Has, has anyone ever been in a, in like a cow field? And, and, like, and like, there's so many cows there. Anyone been surrounded by cows before and, and horses and stuff? How scary is that? They're like scary things, aren't they? But they're well timid. Say boo to a cow and it runs off. No, no word of a love. I remember once when um, I would have been about maybe seven years old, maybe six years old, and uh, I was flying my kite in a cow field, uh, which was over our back garden. And, um, and I remember like, flying this kite, then all of a sudden this cow came out of nowhere. And I was like, oh, there's a cow! And I let the kite go, and I ran. And I jumped over my fence into my back garden. And, um, and my nan and granddad, they were like, Darren, what are you doing? That cow is scared of you. You should be scared of it. And I'm like this like, little like, seven-year-old nipper. And I'm going, are you sure that was scared of me? Would I go back in there? No way would I, because that thing looks scary. Some of them look like they might have little horns on the bubble. Um, you know, um, just to mention, um, the kids, uh, you guys that are going to do I'm a Christian, get me out of here. Um, I went out and got, oh, the Lord's just pulling faces at me now. But I've already started, so I'll finish. Um, I went out and bought some bull's testicles uh, for the young people to eat. I know, yes, come on. Um, they were £1.35 for two, and they were a lot bigger than what I thought they were going to be, I'm not going to lie. Um, but, um, <laughs> I, I remember getting them, I, was, I, I pulled them out of the box, I was like, what the heck? Anyway, but, um, the point is that we sometimes are like this horse. And, and the enemy who, um, you know, the Bible says that Jesus has already conquered the enemy. Jesus has already uh, defeated the enemy. He's a defeated foe. And what's more, Jesus has given you power and authority on earth and in heaven to sort this stuff out. And yet we walk around being dragged around by the world which is going to die and will soon be gone. Yeah, I don't know how close we are to the end. But it's coming, okay? The end is coming. The earth will be destroyed by fire, okay? It will be melting away. I was reading my scriptures this week. The earth will melt away like wax in front of a flame. It will be gone, okay? The earth is nothing. The people of the world are nothing. The, uh, the, the, the devil and his enemy, all the, all the guys and, and all, the, all these like, different demons and stuff, like a third of heaven or something, that they are not going to last. They will be the first to go. They'll be thrown into a pit of fire and they will die. And right now, Jesus has given you the power and the authority to overcome. 
I was once told that um, I should be like a iron fist in a velvet glove because when I first became a Christian, I was, um, let's just say, um, there's a term that we use, it's legalistic, okay? Legalistic means that I liked the rules a lot and I wanted everyone to follow them to the crossing of the T's and the dotting of the I's. And so I would go mad if I saw a Christian doing something unholy. Um, believe it or not, I thought I was holy myself. Uh, which I wasn't. I had to go through a long process of, of, of changing my mindset and, and changing my worldviews and stuff like that in order to become sanctified. Not that I wasn't sanctified already by what Jesus had done on the cross. You know, the Bible says that. It says that you are already sanctified because of what he did on the cross. But your mind needs to go through this sanctification process. And part of that is understanding who you are. And when I first became a Christian, I was like, I was like, I wouldn't pull any punches. I'd go around, I'd tell all the other Christians that they were sinners and they would get it all wrong. I remember once I, um, I worked in a Christian workplace and, um, and we used to have a prayer meeting like every Thursday at Lush. And, um, and this guy um, who wasn't a Christian was working for us. And I went back to go and visit one day and, uh, and this guy was playing rock music. In the uh, in the uh, in the what's it call it in the warehouse, and I was like, "That's not what that stereo is for, my friend. That stereo is for worship." Keep it in mind, I'm meant to be an evangelist, so I should be gentle, right? And uh, and he's like, "No, no, but I like this music. I'll put it on when you're not here." I said, "Don't put that rubbish on in our warehouse, right?" And I, and I said, "If you do, there's going to be trouble." And this guy's like a big lad, and, uh, and and although I was a Christian, I was still tempted to take a swing at him because I'm not a very good Christian sometimes. But I wanted the worship one and not the Satan stuff. You hear what I'm saying? And so I remember going, "You turn it off now, or I'm going to go mad." And then and then I came back from uh, delivering a load of furniture and. Um, and he had his rock music on. Can anybody guess what I did? I didn't punch him. No, that's right, I didn't punch him. You're like, you smashed his head in. No, I didn't. No, no. I was very tempted, but I overcame the temptation by the word of my testimony and the power of the blood. No, no. I, he said, what I did was I cut all the wires off the uh, stereo. I said, no one can use it. <laughs> I, was, I was so harsh. And, uh, and my elder and my boss um, turned around to me and said, Darren, it's all well and good being a prophet of the Lord and saying how it is, but you need to be an iron fist in a velvet glove. You can be strong, but you can be gentle in your delivery. And uh, sometimes, um, you know, Christians, I find, are not an iron fist at all. They're a timid, horsey. Can we play that again? Yeah, keep it going. They're a timid, horsey. Has anyone ever met a horse? They're so happy, aren't you, that you give them a carrot. Like, let's, let's face it, if the horses went for it, they could have as many carrots as they wanted, couldn't they? You know what I mean? We couldn't stop them, could we? If ten horses came into Tesco's this week, you all suddenly go, oh no, you know, no horsey. You know, if they wanted that carrot, they're going to get that carrot, aren't they? You're loving that video, aren't you? Um, the point here is that you have power. You have power. And you are not meant to be timid like this horse. <laughs> yeah? The scriptures say, Jesus did not give you the spirit of timidity. And you might be going, yeah, but he made us gentle. We're meant to be gentle. Yes, gentle, but not timid. Timid means to shy away. Gentle means to attack, but gently. You know what I'm saying? You see the difference? Now, in this scripture, there's three things that I've, uh, that I've written down there. So, number one is he will give you, he has given you, not he will give you, he has already given you. Uh, the spirit of power. We'll come on to that. He has given you the spirit of love. The spirit of love. And then finally, he's given you the spirit of self-discipline. So I'm going to go through this because, you know, there's, there's something that we need to learn today. Yes, we're like this mighty horse that is being carried around by the dog. Firstly, kick that dog in the head, get it out of your life, okay? So get the enemy out. Okay, number one, get the enemy out. You should not be subject to the ways of the world or the ways of the enemy. You need to just tell him to do one, yeah? Anyone been kicked by a horse before? Yeah, yeah, of course you have, because you ride horses all the time, yeah. Is it nice when you get kicked by a horse? Is it a nice feeling? No, no, no. Is it, is it brutal? Yes, it's brutal. You get kicked by a horse, it's brutal. I think I was just saying last night in my discipline that I'm brutal. I cannot help myself. My kids will tell you, when dad's angry, just go and sit down and be quiet because dad's brutal when he's on one. So poor old Liam and Soph, they might be a bit angry one day. And if I'm angry at the same time, it's you're grounded for eight months without any technology. They're like, no, I only said hello in a rude way. 
and I'm like, I'm just in a mood. Um, because I'm a bit like a horse. I've got power and authority, and sometimes I kick out like a muppet, and sometimes I kick the wrong people. Am I right? But I'm not telling you to kick the wrong people, I'm telling you to kick the devil out of your life. Okay. Number one, these three things are, um, are inextricably linked, okay? So without one, you don't get the other. So without self-discipline, guess what? Guess what? You've got no power, yeah? Um, in Revelation, it says that um, we overcome by the word of our testimony and the power of the blood. So number one is, we're covered by the power of the blood already. And the way that you overcome the enemy, the way that you overcome the enemy is with your testimony, okay? Which means that if you haven't got a good testimony, if you've been living a life of Riley, if you're not living life as Jesus lives, if your life isn't disciplined, if you're not self-disciplined, then guess what? You have no testimony. You have no testimony, which means what? Which means that if you've got no testimony, you can't overcome the enemy. You can't kick that little dog in the face. Is anyone suddenly getting excited about kicking a dog in the face? Or is that just me? No? Oh, right, I'll kid, I'll kid, I'll kid, I'll kid, I'll kid. Yeah, here we have the dogs again. Bless them dogs. My poor dog got ill this week and we had to pay loads of money to get her fixed. Um, but you need to be self disciplined. Um, what do I mean by self disciplined? I mean, I mean that on a, on a Monday morning when you wake up, you know, instead of thinking, where am I going to get my Mackies from? Which Mackies am I going to today? Instead of thinking that, you go, where am I going to get my spiritual bread from? I, I, I'm amazed. Laura wakes up every morning pretty much and opens the scriptures and starts reading. I'm a night guy, you know. In the mornings, I'm like, I'm going to get straight to work. I'm going to go out and do some work. So that's normally my way. Um, and I then read at night. But you need to have some sort of discipline in your life whereby you, you start reading your scriptures. Because if you don't feed your spirit, then what's going to happen to your spirit? It's going to die. It's going to... It's going to Starve. It's gonna. It's gonna get weak. Am I right? So you first of all to get self-disciplined, you put some space in your diary to read your scriptures. How else can you feed your spirit? Anyone else know how else you can feed your spirit? You worship. Yeah, worship. You worship. So how about um, you might go? Well, I like to worship and listen to Mark Driscoll on a on a Thursday night. Lovely. You you do that. How about worshiping every day? How do you worship? How do you worship God today? Um, there are a few different ways to worship. Number one is with song, like we're doing on a Sunday morning just here. Um, it's also good to sing during the week. We was out last night worshiping in Bedford, you know, and it's a lovely night. We worshiped for about an hour or so and then had about 18 hours of preaching, um, which was great fun. Um, but you need to find time to worship, put worship in your life. Find time to worship. Okay? Another way that you can worship um, is by giving. You can give your finances. We did that earlier on. Um, that's another form of worship. Another form of worship is to serve. You know, um, you know, in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew, um, there's a few different words. And one of the words for serving God or, or worshipping Him is to, is to do stuff for Him. Okay, it's to do stuff for him. Which means that when you start doing little jobs for Jesus, you're worshipping him. And you might go, yeah, but how do I worship him? Well, you might go out and give out food this week. You might go out and, um, and I don't know, set up the bouncy castle on a Sunday or something else. You know, we were just talking about serving earlier on. But another way that you can worship is with your body. You can worship with your serving. Another way that I like to worship is just by being holy, self-discipline. Self-discipline is, is a form of worship. Yeah, does that make sense? So how else do you need to feed yourself? Anyone else know how else you need to feed yourself? Prayer, you can pray, yeah. Spend some time in prayer. How long do you pray every day? Do you continuously pray? Does God just flick into your mind every now and again or is it all the time? Are you continually aware of God's presence? Or do you have to sit in a room and, and put some candles on to start knowing that you're in his presence? For me, it's continuous. I, I feel like I'm always walking with Jesus. Do I need to sit in the room sometimes and pray? Yes, sometimes I do. But the majority of the time, I've got this connection with him. It's like a hotline. You know, because my Bible says I can talk to him whenever I want. I should do it without ceasing. So you pray. You live a life of self-discipline. You set time aside to pray. But you need to be self-disciplined. You need to start getting into your scriptures. How else can you get fed? Anyone else know another way to get fed today? Feed your spirit. We're hanging around with other Christians. Yeah? 
If you, uh, for whatever reason, think that you can be a Christian without seeing other Christians, the chances are you're not actually a Christian. Because my Bible says that when I have given my life to Jesus, I have this moment where the Holy Spirit comes upon me and my spirit is born again. And so my spirit is one with God. And so naturally, naturally, God is a unified God. He likes to bring unity to the body. So if you don't feel drawn to other Christians, the chances are you're not actually a Christian. Okay? So if you're watching online today and you're thinking, I don't need to go to church, I can just watch from my uh, living room or my bedroom or whatever, then you're probably not a Christian. Today you can make a choice to follow him, to be filled with his spirit, to be unified with the rest of the body. But that's how you grow, that's how you eat, that's how you feed. Is anyone hungry for God today? You know, we can be thirsty for his Holy Spirit when it's refreshing. But sometimes we just need to be hungry for what God has for us in our lives. So the first thing we need to do is become self-disciplined. Then it says we need to love. Love what? Love Jesus? Yeah, love Jesus. Man, when I, when, I, when I think about church and how people grow and, and the people that go further with God, believe it or not, the ones that go further with Jesus and do more amazing things, more mighty things for Him, aren't the ones who are the most gifted, believe it or not. Do you know that? It's not always the ones who preach the best. It's not always the ones who uh, have the most money and give the most money or any, anything like that. It's not all those different things. It's not even the one who turns up to church the most every week. The majority of the time, the person who goes the furthest for God is the one who loves Jesus first. The one who loves him most dearly, most deeply. And so a lot of the time when I'm speaking, when I'm thinking about what I want to preach on during the week and stuff like that, a lot of the time my thing is I just want you to love Jesus more. It's really funny because Harry uh, said to me this week, if that had a catchphrase, it would be, you don't love Jesus enough. Is that what you said the other day? Which makes you a bad Christian, I think, about it at the end. Yeah, is that right? <laughs> is that another one, is it? Yeah, anyhow. You don't love Jesus enough. Lord, why is my life so messed up? You don't love Jesus enough. That's, that's my answer. Lord, why, why can't I read my Bible every day? I really, really want to, but I just can't seem to bring myself to do it. You don't love Jesus enough. Yeah, if you did, you'd read it, wouldn't you? It's like his love letter to you. I think I was just saying on the van on the way home yesterday, the amount of times I get people come up to me and say, oh, I haven't, um, I've, I've got this awful thing happening in my life and I'm really, really struggling, right? And then I say, you know, the way to overcome it is by getting self-disciplined and reading your instruction manual, the Bible, read your Bible every day and pray every day. And then six months later, they come up to me and say, my life's still messed up fast, so I don't know what to do about it. I said, well, did you read your Bible? No, I didn't. I can't bring myself to read it. And in my head, do you know what the, word, the first word that comes into my head is? I'll be really honest with you. Moron. I think moron. I think, what the heck, man? What are you wasting my time for? I gave you the answer six months ago, you know what I mean? But if you... Is that what? Um, if you want to... If you want to love Jesus more, or if you do love him more, you're going to read your scriptures. If you want to love him more, read your scriptures. It's really interesting, isn't it? It all comes back to this thing. But if you want to overcome the enemy in your life and you want to live a life that is, that is holy and disciplined and powerful because all these things come together as a package, then you're going to have to love Jesus more. And you're going to have to find a way to find, fall in love with him. You're just going to have to do it. And you're like, how do I love someone more? Try spending time with them. I never fell in love with Laura by ignoring her. Yeah? And let me tell you, if I, did, if, I did, if I had ignored her, I don't think she would have fell in love with me either. I've got a feeling we might have been like besotted. I don't think we could like, leave each other alone. Unless I can leave you alone to a dirty little teenager. Right? <laughs> Am I right? It's true, isn't it? Yeah? You ever notice these teenagers, like, just stop touching each other, mate. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, that's what I'm thinking all the time. Just leave each other alone. But that's what it should be like with Jesus. You spend time together. Like, I just can't stop touching you, Jesus. I just can't stop trying to grab you and hold on to you. I can't get enough. I love that lyric. I can't get enough of Jesus. I can't get enough of your wonderful love. Ah, it's lovely, isn't it? I just thought of that. And the first thing that came into my head was, I can't get enough of that wonderful duff. You know, um, that guy for Simpsons. And then I, I changed guff to love. 
Yeah. <laughs> Are you like what I did? Yeah, come on. So how do you overcome the enemy? First of all, you realise that you have power and that you are not like the little dog in this video. You're like the big fat horse who has loads of power but doesn't know how to use it. It's like being in a Ferrari, isn't it? You prowl around in the streets making loads of noise in a Ferrari, but when can you ever f put your foot down? You don't. Some people just like to have the power for having the power safe, don't they? Some people want to go to the autobahn and go wild, try and kill themselves. I'm one of them. If I had a Ferrari, you can guarantee it, I'd find a way of tipping it, even though they're untippable, because they're so low. I'd kill myself, that's why I'm not allowed one. Jesus wants to give me one, but he said, don't kill yourself, down. Okay? <laughs> If I've got power, I'm going to use it. So many Christians don't use it. So how do you get the power? You've already got it. How do you use the power? First, you have self-discipline. Then you move into a zone of love. You love Jesus first. Who else do you love? Anyone know who else you're supposed to love? Oh, yourself and your neighbours. Let's go with yourself first. Yeah, because you can't love someone else if you can't love yourself, can you not? Yeah, so if I hate myself and try and love someone else, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to, actually, I'm not really loving them. I'm going to probably work out a way in which I can get them on my side so they love me and then I'm going to abuse them. Okay, if you don't love yourself, you're going to abuse everyone else. Okay, just the way it goes. All right? So first of all, you love yourself. Yeah? How do you do that? Maybe you could start with looking in the mirror and saying, I love you. I look in the mirror, I love you, Dazza. And you might go, Darren never does that. Yeah, yeah. Is there, is there... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Right? Right, now, now I'm going to say this. Right? You're going to look at me every time you see me. Right? Has anyone ever seen me when I'm at the showroom and they're mirrored, it's like mirrored on the outside, isn't it? And I'm walking towards a van and I can't stop looking at myself. I'm not, it could be narcissistic or it could just be that actually, I'm in love with myself. Because Jesus told me to be. Huh? Yeah, well, I see, I'm looking at my reflection in the mirror like, all the time. Yeah, I walk up to the car, I'm looking at my reflection in the car. I'm like, I'm driving along, I'm moving the mirror to look at myself. I'm like, and it's so pretty. And it's so pretty. Yeah. You look, yeah, I, I'm so pretty, yeah. You know, I've gone out, I've, I've done my hair. I'm wearing my best t-shirt that makes me look slightly skinny from the front, not from the side. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've brushed my teeth, I'm looking decent, I'm smelling good, I had a little spray, I had a little chab bath early on. You know what I mean? And I'm just loving life and I'm loving myself. Do you know how else I know I love myself? No, no, I feed myself. I feed myself, right? So, so, so the times when I feel most loved is when I'm eating, believe it or not. And you go, well, that explains something, doesn't it? You know what I mean? But, but I, 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 find, I find comfort when I'm eating, so I treat myself. But I, I went out the other day and I, yeah, Laura's like, yeah, he does. Um, I went out the other day and I bought two packs of donuts. Kids, who, who ate the most donuts? Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. Do you remember how many I had? There's, there's ten. <laughs> there's one left. No, you two had one as well. <laughs> I let them share one, you know what I mean? <laughs> they were so soft and moist and lovely. I was like, I just want to treat myself. Um, and they were only 25p. Woo -woo. So I didn't have to use loads of money up. Um, and then, and, you know, and I just treat myself. Anyone else like, like going to a spa day? Anyone else like going to the gym? You know, when you go to the gym and you've, you're pumped out and then, and then, now, I said, we're going to have a gym up on Birchwood if we get this building right. And I said, I want the mirror on the outside and the window on the inside so I can look out, no, the other way around, mirror on the inside so I can look at myself, but see through from the outside so other people can look at me. You know what I mean? <laughs> So, so when I'm working out and I'm feeling all buff, you know, and the veins start popping out, you know, and I'm feeling like, well, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? And you're just like working out, and, and Laura's like, Laura's like, why do you need to look in the mirror when you're working out? I'm like, who doesn't? You know, I'm there for a reason, because I love myself when I work out. I want to get strong. Love yourself. There's nothing wrong with loving yourself. There's nothing wrong with loving yourself. Oh, sorry, yeah. Well... Alright, well, my, my inside appearance is just as nice. I love my inside as well. I know she's like, yeah, do you want to come and preach, babe? I don't, know, I don't know much about the inside of me, really. I'd love to know more about me. I think I need to learn more about me. Do you ever, like, um, I read loads of books on, like, psychology and stuff so I can get to know me better. Anyone else do that? 
And, and, and you might think, oh yeah, he's just doing that so he can get to know you a lot better. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do that as well. But the main reason is, I remember I read this book um, called The Narcissistic Family. And I read this book, right, and all the way through I'm going, oh God, I do that. That wasn't an old God like cussing God, that was no God, Lord, I do that, can you help me stop doing that? That's a broken behaviour. And I'm reading this book and I'm learning so much about myself, and then I went on to another book, um, like intimacy and all this sort of stuff, and how do you do all that sort of stuff? You've got to know yourself. Get to know yourself. Get to know who you are. Get to know your emotions. Oh, that one, that's, that's angry. Oh, this one's a new one, what's this mean? You know, benevolence. Anyone know what that means? Yeah, that's a big word, isn't it? Is it something like not giving a turd? No, benevolence is good. Oh, benevolence is good. Uh, love. And we love. Oh, that sounds nice, doesn't it? I'm going to go and look that up later on, then I'm going to start feeding it for myself. <laughs> but you need to love yourself. And then, and then, once you love Jesus, and he allows you and teaches you how to love yourself, it's only natural that you'll start loving others, isn't it? I never learned how to love my wife until about maybe four years into being a Christian. And uh, I realised that she loved me. And so I started loving her. And I remember sitting in a room, um, and it's a very awkward situation. We had, was in a room, there's some counselling, and, uh, and there's this little tiny sofa, and, uh, and I had my arm around Laura, and um, what usually happens is, when I meet with God, I, I start crying. Because I'm a big girl, really, right? I started crying, and Laura reached over and started rubbing my back. And uh, Sharon turns around and says, she's showing you, she loves you. I went, oh, she is. Isn't that lovely? And it just dawned on me, oh, man. Yeah, I'm lucky because I've got a hot wife and two great kids, right? And I love all that stuff. You know, I really love life. I love the fact that God has blessed me in that way. But until that moment, I really didn't really know how much he had blessed me with someone that loved me unconditionally. If you knew our past, you'd know that we've been through a load of crap and it's mostly my fault. And the fact that she's still around means that she will stay with me forever. And it's not for the money, because I ain't got none. <laughs> it's for this. <laughs> you, can, you can start loving others. You can start loving others. You can start going out to the streets. It makes me laugh when these guys, they go into town with food and give food away to homeless people. In the middle of the night, we're well, not in the middle of the night, but late in the evenings with like your kids and stuff. I'm like, that's amazing. And then you get up and do it, and then, and then there's someone else will go out and do something. And, and like, has anyone ever noticed that Leah buys people gifts? Has anyone else noticed that? Because she loves them. Isn't it? Yeah. I stand here and preach because I love you. I oh, know, I hate being up here really, although I'm starting to enjoy it now. Um, but I used to really, really hate it. I couldn't stand being up here. I felt so insecure about people that were looking at me. Nowadays, I don't like having stuff on a big screen because I, I prefer that you look at me and you engage with me. Because I've got something for you, I've got a gift for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright, mate. But. But you need to start, and you need to start learning how to love other people if you're going to wield the power of God. Not just because you can't wield it without the love, but because you have no reason to wield the power of God. I'll tell you what, put that finger up on the screen again. You, you won't want to wield the power of God unless you love. Unless you love. Okay? If you don't love the world, and the people in it, then what's going to happen is, you're going to be like this guy, just being dragged along. Just being dragged along by the world or by the enemy. Because what's going to happen is, you're going to sit there and you're going to go, I have no reason to carry on, I have no purpose. Without love there is no purpose. And, and this horse is basically just in the field going, I'll just wander anywhere that I'm dragged, even lightly. Because he's got no purpose. I bet you if there's a filly on the other side of that fence, it, that dog would go flying. Yeah. Wouldn't it? Yeah? If that horse had a purpose, that dog would be out of there, wouldn't it? Yeah? With no teeth. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? You get purpose. You get a purpose to love the world, love the people in it. And you tear the enemy's teeth out. It's amazing, isn't it? What a thought. I'm going to come into land in a second. 
I want to read you one more scripture, is that right? Yeah. Have we all learned something today? Yeah. You have the power. And it's up to you to wield it. And if you don't use it, I'd love to say you lose it, but that's not the way Jesus works. We were talking about mercy on Birchwood last week, and um, was talking about how Jesus, he gives you these things, even though you're not going to use them right. He gives you salvation and a life that is free from sin, free from death, free to live a life of bliss and peace and joy and love. And then we go, thanks for the awesome life, Jesus, but I'm going to carry on walking in my turdy way. But that's mercy. It gives you it anyway. Even though you're going to abuse it. In the same way, he gives you the power. He gives you the power of God. Knowing that there's a good chance you're just going to sit there and waste it watching the telly and watching the world go by. This is my scripture. Matthew 16 verse 19 says, I will give you, this is Jesus speaking, I will give you, as it happens, this is in a long time past, so let's uh, think of it like this. I have given you, Christian, out there, I have given you the keys to heaven. The keys to heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose, or the other way around, isn't it? Whatever you bind in heaven will be bound on earth. Whatever you loose in heaven will be loosed on earth. Today, you have the power. You have the authority. I learned something this week. Authority is godly. Control is satanic. It's demonic. We should never be controlling, but we should always live in authority. And God has given you all authority. To cast out demons, to heal the sick, to preach the kingdom of God. I guess my question to you guys is, what are you going to do with it? Are you just going to waste it? Be led around by a little dog with no teeth? Or are you going to stand up, take hold of it, and chase after the plans that he has for your life? Let's stand, shall we? We're going to sing a couple of those worship songs again. And um, I'm going to invite you, as we always do, we know I, I don't speak on a Sunday for no reason. I don't believe in it. I really don't. There's always a response. Always a response. You can have the response of, I'm just going to sit by and let it pass me by. Or you can have the response of, man, I want that life. I want that love. I want that self-discipline. You know, uh, Anthony Joshua, you know, boxer. Does anyone know why he's one of the world's top boxers? Self-discipline. Self-discipline, yeah. We met Mr. Universe when we were at a spa day, I love myself like that. We sat next to um, Mr. Universe and he was ginormous and I was like, mate, their muscles are immense, where'd you get them from? And he went, self-discipline. He gets to choose his own meals twice a year. And uh, that was one of his days, and he was pigging out. And the rest of the year, it's chicken, 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 fish, 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 chicken, chicken, chicken. About 20 times a day. Amazing, isn't it? Self-discipline in a gym every day. Working out every day. Have the body you want. Have you got the spirit you want? Have you got the soul you want? Have you got the walk you want? I'm not going to pray for everyone today who comes out to respond. I might pray for one or two. But this is your time to respond to what God is saying. Live up to the calling you've been given. Amen. If you'd like to respond during this song, then just come forward. I've got five minutes, and then I'm off. So make your choice, make your move. I'm going to turn the video off. So have a good time today. Be blessed by Jesus. Amen.